In this presentation, we will look at your sales conversations and presentations from four different points of view. One, how do you connect? Two, how do you structure your conversation or presentation, whether you're talking to one, five, or 15? Look at stories. Now, stories can be case histories. They are client examples. And when you master the ability to tell your happy, satisfied client stories well, it is as if you are taking your happy, satisfied clients with you on your sales call. And specificity. Specificity builds credibility. And what I would challenge you to do when you leave our presentation, our time together, that you will perhaps collaborate with your team and revisit what you are now saying with these four areas in mind. And these principles work if you're talking to one person or a team of people. Let's work on the first principle, which is, if you understand everyone is more interested in themselves than they are in us, we will never go wrong. That means, as you are talking to them, make sure your language is more you-focused than I-focused. Here's a specific example, coming up soon. So when you're connecting to your prospects, you need to appeal to their rational self-interest. Don says, ask questions. This is true. How else will you find out what is of interest to them if you don't ask them good questions? Understand, people make decisions for their reasons, not yours, which is the reason you look at what you're saying from their point of view, and everything else being equal, the best presentation wins. I am assuming that you have good competition that, like you, has good credentials, good references, good products, good services, and very often, on paper, we look exactly the same. In that case, the best presentation will win. I have a good friend from the Fairmont Hotel in San Francisco. And one morning, he called and said, Patricia, help! As you know, I'm a great salesperson one-on-one. -on -one. However, I have the opportunity to speak to a convention committee. There are 10 people, they're coming to San Francisco, they're looking at the Fairmont, considering the hotel and San Francisco, but they're also seriously considering San Diego. And I get really nervous when I stand up and have to talk to a group. So I asked him the questions we should all ask ourselves before any presentation. Who are you addressing? Convention committee. Two, what are you really selling? He said, well, I'm really not selling the Fairmont because they would stay here if they come to San Francisco. But I, I happen to know that they're equally considering San Diego. And the idea is you can't ever knock your competition. What you do is make your offering sound more appealing. How long do you have to speak? Eight minutes. What is it worth to the Fairmont Hotel if you get the business? He said $500,000. I said, let me get this right. You have eight minutes to make $500,000. That is $1,041. $1,041.46 per second, even when you pause. Now, left to your own resources, how would you start? We well, said, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're enjoying your stay at the Fairmont. Everyone's looking after you very well, and we appreciate the opportunity to be considered. And you know, San Francisco is a very popular destination. I said, look, you've been very polite, but you've wasted twenty thousand dollars. You haven't said anything. <laughs> Why don't you say this? Welcome to the Fairmont. Thank you for opportunity to show you the benefits of San Francisco. 
And in the next eight minutes, you will decide the best decision you can make for your association and your members is to bring your convention to San Francisco and the Fairmont Hotel. So including the welcome, that is six you or yours to Fairmont. That is a you focused, focusing on their point of view, just by reading what you would say to build rapport and to start the presentation. Because understand, in that case, they know him. They've been escorted around the hotel. Now, that is a good emotional opening, making a good emotional connection. However, you have to give some logical reasons that this committee can go back to the association staff and tell their members why we select selected this location. So I said, then you might want to consider saying, San Diego is a magnificent destination. And you should go there another year. <laughs> However, the reasons you should come to San Francisco this year are, now give logical, specific reasons. It could be the time of the year you're coming is the most reasonable price for hotel rooms. Or the time that you're selecting, there's the Chinese New Year, so there's so much activities in the city you can enjoy, not an additional expense. It could be the de Young Museum has just reopened, and this would be a great off-site location very reasonably because they want to introduce it to the community. So specifics. And then, rest assured, the 538 associates of the Fairmont Hotel will be here to serve you. And imagine years from now, when your attendees are sitting around a convention lo hotel lobby, reminiscing about the best conventions they ever attended, and they remember their favorite in San Francisco, when you were the planning committee. Now, did he say, bring your convention here, and you will go down in history with your association? No. Perhaps they might have thought it. Because as you know from your own volunteer activities, there's a lot more work than there is glory. So I challenge you to think, and perhaps what you would want to do is to sit with your team and revisit what you now say and put it together again, making sure and if there's only one part of your presentation you would script, not to read but to internalize, would be the opening. How do you build rapport? Make sure it is you focused.